Hello, my name is Rick Houston, and welcome to the Scene Vault Podcast, your source for all things NASCAR history. Presented by Las Vegas Motor Speedway, America's racing showplace. Well, and we were on track to mend a lot of fences that have been broken in 83 during that time period. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, I always thought Mark was a better driver than me anyway. Did. Oh, so you did he. Say what you do. <laughs> so did he. Oh, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> well, ain't often I agree with Rich. <laughs> well, I actually worked uh, for Eddie's Garage, Eddie Museum, and Richard Petty. I mowed yards, uh, whatever they need me to do. I've been doing this for about seven years, but it's been good for me because it, uh, you know, through all the years of that there was any turmoil or whatever. Well, it's allowed me to get to know Richard and his family again. The day NASCAR and all of us associated in any way with NASCAR forget its past, that's the day we don't have any future. All right, so um, May 12th, the year 2000, uh, I was actually in New Hampshire, and I know how it affected me personally, uh, professionally and personally. Um, I can't begin to imagine what it was like to be a member of the family. Where, where were you guys when you heard? Well, I was in Memphis with the truck team, it was our, our yeah. family truck team, and uh, Travis was there too, right? Mm-hmm. Travis Owens, who, who uh, so we, they, they were pretty close growing up. And uh, anyway, we they called us to the trailer. Uh, made us all stop what we were doing, you know, and I think the whole, all the, everything stopped, and then we were in Memphis, you know, so, uh, and they, and then, they, and then Fred, Wanky, <laughs> Adam's dead, you know, and we're all, you know, like, what? And then they proceeded to tell us, you know, and, but he just, before he even got told, he, he kind of felt it, you know what I mean? It was just like, I don't know, it's hard to describe that, that he, he felt it, the, what they were going Fred? to tell us. Fred Wanky. Okay. And uh, anyways, uh, you know, we just lost grandfather not long before that. And uh, y- you got to realize that, that everything was sort of hinged on Adam, the the future of the, the way things were going then. And uh, Yeah, but tell about the – you had to – they couldn't get a hold of Kyle. They couldn't get a hold of Richard. You did, they, they, they had you call, start calling – you had to call down here and get a hold of Martha Jane to get a hold of Richard. I mean, it was a well, cell phones was kind of new. Then. Oh yeah, everybody was. But yeah, we we were, I, it, it was just a strange deal. I mean, like you said, you you told your little part of it and all that. We were here at the shop, and and in the back, our back building. That's when Chrysler, the Dodge or whatever, were renting out for the to put together the new Intrepid. Yeah, the the, the research team, I guess. But anyway, a couple of guys that worked on our truck team before, David Hayhurst and somebody else, they had heard, and they come over here, and it was like, what's going on? Did, did y'all hear? And was like, well, no. And then all of a sudden, the phone call started coming, and we we just, Mark and me and David and all that, we're just standing there and it's stunned. I mean, didn't know what to do. I mean, it was like, it was, it was a 9-11 moment for our family. We didn't know what to do. Yeah, they were asking where the king was, and I didn't know. I did. Because, you know, I but didn't you know talk about – Getting the getting, you know, you know, I'm talking about hitting the wall, getting the air knocked out of you, and all that. It was the same kind of feeling. It's kind of like, oh, what just happened? Well, and it's like Timmy had said, you know, we 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 was excited because we'd went through all these years where you know we was all racing and carrying on. We, there'd been Kyle had had some success, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. but Adam was the deal. You know, he was going to be their deal, and it just shocked the whole family and uh, just uh, it just was, it was just a, well, and we were on track. To mend a lot of fences that had been broken in '83, during that time period, it was just well, we we we'd all come back together. We were doing the engines for the truck program, and we were a major part of it with Chrysler and with Richard. And you know, when I say the truck program, it Richard's team, but and then and then uh, Adam had run a few races in the truck and all. But just, well, you know, just, Adam, just and he was looking shot. forward to working with us too. Oh, right? Adam, you know, the engine stuff. Adam, yeah. you know, when he, when he was growing up, he was he was like the rest of us. He was a little bit of a, a wilder, but but at that time he had settled settled down. 
He was a fine young man. He was respectful to people. He knew where he was going. And, uh, yeah, and, he, and he, yeah. he was, I'll, I'll just say yeah, that. He, I, he, 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 was, he, he made a transition and, and never he looked was, back. He was focused, and I think, so I, I think I, he would have made it. Feel like, yeah, we all feel like he was going to be good. Now, did you, did you start running trucks after that, or had yep. you already been running trucks? No, I had a, that's kind of where it started. Yeah, it was, a, I hadn't, we had raced late models, and I probably hadn't raced since 94 or 95 at that point. And because we went to work doing the engines on the truck deal. And I had 96 was my last race with uh, Rob, Bob Rahilly and, and Dick Rahilly. They had a they had a deal set up down there at Homestead, and they needed a driver. So I went down there. With the Jim Rosenblum truck. The Rosenblum truck, and I got to run for them for that race. And that was my last race in 96 at Homestead. And I, you was the, the – Well, as far as our driving that, and stuff, we, we had already said, okay, well, we're – we're this, you know, we're aging up, but our focus was the engines. We want to be a part of the petty organization, Umbrella. Yeah. and Richard allowed us to be a part of the engine program with the truck. So that had already, you know, that was our focus. And then I guess that happened with Adam in May, and then what was it? August we it went was, to IRP. Yeah, it was J- June we started. Uh, Dad, Dad, that's why like I said Dad started putting together that deal to get them to them uh, that truck to go to IRP and that was uh I guess August was IRP what, and it surprised me because um I, I really kind of didn't know nothing about it and I think it was something daddy and Richard come up with as far as getting them trucks and then I just assumed with his experience Richie would drive because not all I'd ever run was late model stock well we when when, when this deal come together then I, I just said look I had my time I, 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 I had my time in the sun let's let's put our efforts towards Mark and I, I said I'm I'm behind him 100%, and because uh, I always thought Mark was a better driver than me anyway, but that was just that. I mean, you, I, you did. Oh, so you did he. Say what you do. <laughs> so did he. Oh, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> well, ain't often I agree with Rich. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. but must not even one of us been very good, or we'd have done it for a living. <laughs> well, well, yeah, but I'm just saying at that time I was, I, I knew. You, we, we weren't going to make it two of us trying to do the same thing. So I backed out and I said, I'm 100% behind you because he had been 100% behind me when we did the 53 and all that. And Timmy's 100% beside, behind us both. So, you know, it was it was an easy thing easy it, decision. Not to get ahead of the story. Easy decision. It, it wasn't. just wasn't meant to be like Daddy would say. Yeah. That's what I say about all of it. But anyway, it's, it's a, I, we, we, on our – It wasn't pe- on, it wasn't good enough. On our Petty yeah. Brothers YouTube, we, we go in depth on this deal and we tell the story and we'll, we'll – Mark went down there to test at Caraway, and I mean, he 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 was busting some good laps down there, and he's like, "We're we're excited about this." Yeah, we're but excited. still unsure. Yeah, uh, you know, never even seen IRP. Had yeah, it. and then we went into, uh, you know, Daddy and, you know, he'd worked out a deal with Bob Kieslowski to uh, be on call if, if he couldn't get around. He was going to jump into truck for us, and and make the race for us. And uh, like I said, Bob come up to me after the first practice and said, "Hey, he's he's getting the job done. Don't." Don't 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 Just back away. Go. Yeah, let him go. I'm going back over here to my deal. Now, how many truck races did you actually? Well, was was going to go run IRP that year, and end up running the rest of that season, right? Yeah, we, we, so we the ran, IRP was the only thing on the on the docket. Ran yeah. seven or eight that year, and then I run one or two for Mike and Tex Powell the very yeah. next year. So probably nine or ten races. Yeah, we all went to up. let's see, went to Chicago, we went to Nashville, we <laughs> went to Texas. Hey, but it was a deal where it was only approved, you know, I, I, I hadn't had no experience. Yeah. And so they let me go to IRP because it was, it, it, we still had to have, We had late model experience. But you still had to get. Uh, you progression to the big tracks. You know, you had to get permission from NASCAR on what tracks you got to run. And Wayne Alton helped us a lot and we went through him. But it just happened to be that the schedule worked out where it was that ladder from the size of track as we went. Yeah. And then, uh. Where was that track in Chicago? It's not the one no, in Juliet. It's, uh, one in Cicero. The Cicero. Flat, remember the flat track? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah. we ran there. So funny story about that. So, uh, you know, I I was on Brendan Gone's team in uh, at Childress's for a couple of years, and uh, but going back to that, uh, Mark actually made the race, and Brendan missed the race. So we've been friends with them for years. Well, you know. they he had a uh, a sponsor and Napa. It was and with Napa. so he was like, hey, could y'all uh, 
Did y'all put this on your truck? And, and we said, only if you'll let us use your pit crew. Because we didn't have nothing. We didn't, yeah. we didn't. Well, and, and Brandon tells a story. It's the only time he ever went over the wall on, during a race. Because I think he was the catch can man. Something, yeah. He, he talked about the lug nuts flying and all that, but it gave him a different perspective. Yeah. As a driver. Yeah. As a driver of what the crew members were going through. But, yeah, we traded. We put their sponsor on the truck. For the pit crew. Yeah. Because we didn't yeah. have a full pit well, crew. Well, you know, it goes and back. And I didn't run with the flip-out race. It goes, nah, it, 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 it's, it's, it goes yeah. back to, to Daddy, to Lee, to Richard. They always were willing to help people, and that's what they instilled in us. Brendan, at that point, he needed some help because he had a sponsored deal and he had to have it in the race. What? We were willing to help. I don't even think we took any money. We just took the pit crew. Yeah, and a lot of people helped us coming through, yeah. whether, whether it be when we was yes. running Richie in the ARC or the Cup, but them ARCA races, the, a lot of guys would come over and yes. help us do oh, pit yeah. stops and stuff, and we, we were just fortunate that a lot so, of people helped us out. We looked – the the <coughs> years two thousand two thousand one were not good years in in NASCAR. Did did all of that safety controversy play into? I mean, was that something that that you thought about? I mean, you I mean, Adam had been hurt. Yeah, but, that and saying I was in that race at Texas when we lost Tony Roper. Yeah, and uh, Steve Steve and him. I, Guess maybe you were uh, in the race. I was in the race. I, really? I dodged a wreck and run through the trial to miss it. Did you really? Yeah, because I think Steve and yeah. Derek Cope got together. Yeah, and then I put Tony And I, if you watch that back, I'm. You I, go down. Well, I'd go down and I hit up. the grass, and it was slit. It was wet. It was dewy. Yeah. And I remember kind of getting sideways, just knocking out of gear, and just rode like a roller. But, but but no, did I think about that? I mean, no, I mean, I I hurt for people and thought about it, but I guess maybe I was ignorant. And was you know that that ain't gonna happen to me, right? Kind of a deal. But I think when everybody really, uh, when when everybody was like, "Hey, hang on a minute," was maybe when we lost Earnhardt because yeah. he was like a. But you know, it goes back to nine. Like he was talking about, he was talking about ninety four. That day, that that race at Daytona, that was you lost uh, Neil Bonnet and uh, uh, Rodney yeah. Orr yeah. within four or five days. Yeah. And then that guy in the arc, I don't know who it was, before that, he'd got hurt really bad coming off two, knocked the wall down. Or not coming off four, he knocked the wall down. So 2000, that was tough on drivers and all that. But, you know, that NASCAR, that's what we was kind of going through. We were losing people here and there. 2000 was a, a big deal because you lost so many people. You lost, like like he said, them three, uh, Adam and Erwin and uh, Roper, and then you come back and then the Earnhardt deal. That's when people. Divisions. That's yeah, when everybody freedom. started taking a look at it. But, but back to the question, dude, I, I don't think I ever thought about it because I thought maybe I was just cocky enough, thinking it ain't mm-hmm. gonna happen to yeah. me. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, now at this age, it'd worry me to death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it really well, would. No, it would. I mean, it well, would. that's you know, yeah. the, the ninety four day. I'm sitting on pit road, waiting to go practice. You know how it is when you restrict restrictor plate and you're waiting for somebody to send you out to get a, to get an open. I'm sitting in there, and they just said, "Get ready." You, you know, because they're going to tell you when to go, and you go to get in a, get a hole. And then at, about the time Timmy's like, say, get ready, get ready. And then red flag. And then they shut down practice. And like, we was like, oh, whatever. They pushed us back in there. And then it started coming in there, and Neil Bonnet was dead. Holy cow. That took that took the wind out of the whole garage. Yeah. Because that wasn't a rookie that got killed. That was a dang veteran. Yeah, and a friend. There, oh, yeah. Well. And it was, it was a – I remember you talking about the Winston Cup scene there. Uh, Deb Williams coming up, and she was in tears. She was she was upset really bad. Or about that track was it? Yeah, I mean, everybody that everybody was. Everyone that's and it was, uh, but that was a that was a weird feeling that week because everybody was on edge. You know, was running Hoosier tires and Goodyears, and and everybody know what what to do. But it's the same thing Mark was going through in two thousand after losing them people. Yeah, you don't okay. That was them. It ain't gonna happen to me. But when it happened to Earnhardt. And when it happened to Bonnet, then when you're a young guy, you're thinking, oh, that could happen to me. Yeah. So 2008, the doors close. Ours didn't. We're still down here. <laughs> yeah, but the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. Yeah. They, yeah, they, 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 they pulled out of here and went to Charlotte. And, yeah, that was, that was a weird deal, too, because, you know, since 1952 – Somebody's well, been we, a race we, team we, here we, in Level Cross. We, we can't go straight into that, Rick. Yeah, that ain't you're, you're jumping a lot of years. Right yeah, that ain't okay. Right. All right. All I'm saying is, we were down here. Kind of after that, we went through the 
Carlos Contreras years with the trucks, and we were all involved with that. And and things were rolling here good. This was a complete engine shop. We had R and D going with Chrysler and all kinds of stuff. Just it was we, we had picked up the momentum again. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would put it in that, those terms. All right, so we. You know, you, you 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 do all this stuff, and 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 then all of a sudden, the fruit starts drying up. You know, I don't know if it was because of economic, the world or whatever, but we started feeling the pressure, two thousand five, six, and earlier than that. You know, and then actually, the two thousand eight. I guess that's when the economy really took a crap. Yeah, but for us personally, the. You know, we'd been doing the truck engines for Richard's team. Now, was was the it, the the engine shop here? Yes. yes sir. Was that a separate company from Petty Enterprise? Yes. No, we were Maurice Petty and Associates. Associates. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And and so um, okay, the trucks were actually done in Thomasville. Yep. So we we worked and we we worked Richard for Petty Enterprises to build the engines for so many years, and then the last couple of years we were actually a a vendor from Dodge. And then Dodge provided him the engines, but we worked hand in hand with Ted yeah. Flack and John Worley, Joey Arrington. That whole we was a part it of that. It was a pretty umbrella. good group to be in. So yeah. we, we were lucky and fortunate to be a part of that umbrella. Well, you just did that episode with Robert Presley. Yeah. We had an engine in his car. Well, and that's Harris. what came of that. We we yeah. lost it. We there wasn't really a deal for us, and we still had engines here that belonged to Dodge. And then Ted Flack called us about two weeks before the truck race at Daytona and we'll know if we had such and such engine ready or if it was still sitting here and we what had happened is we had uh, we went to Homestead with it that last race of 03 and that boy from that man from driving school's son was driving anyways didn't make a race with it but then they needed Ted wanted the motor to provide to Jim Harris and Harris trucking for Robert to run and so we took that motor and put it in the car and or in the truck Ran real good that week. You know, that was when he was leading, coming off four, and Rick just, Crawford beat him to the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so we, we had a year or two there where we worked for, we did engines for Harris, Jim Harris, Harris Trucking, and Bob Brevac. Did some for him, too. Different yeah. people yeah. were driving for Tina him. Tina Gordon was so the one. So we, we were trying to make a go of it. And, and, and it was go, it was going good. And and, and they, we, they even put us on the R&D for the late model Stock yep. Dodge yep. program. I mean, wow. like, so Mari's Petty Associates was gaining, you yeah, know. When Dodge come back and sponsored the Winston race, if I call yeah. it, the, the Dodge racing series. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff happening well, we did a lot in of these stuff years. Between yeah. us and Joey for that. To uh, on a, for us to be on a rebound from the, right. from the 2001 and earlier. So anyways, you're just going to ask a question about 08. <laughs> I forgot what it was. Well, <laughs> I can tell you what it was. It was yeah. when they, they yeah. moved to right. Charlotte. Yeah. But, but uh, by that time. Um, now, did you guys did you guys keep on plugging here? Well, or what had happened is in 05, the end of 05. Uh, uh, that's what I'm leading into, yeah, and yeah. I'll be done. I'm yeah, done with the no, story. No, yeah. no. So we were out here working on late model stocks and, and helping a lot of people, which Denny Hamlin was one of them guys. And there's a lot of people involved that we were doing late model stock motors for. You could probably name off more than I can. But my point is, me and Mark and Richie was out here one morning, and we're, we looked at each other right square and I said, we got a great side business right here because we had lost our support from Dodge. You well, know? We, we, we had a good little engine business, but we was trying to feed four families off mm -hmm. of it. Well, it was really more than that. We, okay, but we were trying to feed a lot of families off of yeah. it. And, it's, you know, they, they just... and, and working day and night and not really feeling like you're just progressing. Yeah. So you see what I mean? So that's when we reached the crossroads. We said, all right, we got to go out and get a job and we'll continue this deal here as long as we can and how many years ago was that 2006 you went you left before i did you mm -hmm. went to bill davis didn't you yeah but that was the end of 05 yeah 05 so okay 2008 sorry i, I just had to get you up to but so but yeah. so by yeah. that time um timmy went to work at rcr i went to work at bill davis and richie was working for dad helping mom and dad around so we we still did Engines and stuff on the side, which turned into what Timmy's business is now, which is Moonshine Speed Shop. So awesome. when, when they when they when they did their deal in 08, it didn't really affect us. No, we was already we were it was ineffective because it was we had started was, two years earlier. Everything yeah. had separated back, and, yeah. and it, it wasn't because of uh, 
it wasn't because people didn't get along separated. It just it was the times. Right. You know, the, the, yeah. It just was. It's just, it just it's what they had to do. We got our we got our deal, and they got their deal. All right. So what is, what are you guys doing now? You've got the moonshine speed shop. Speed shop. But I, I work my day job is at ECR Engines, which is Richard Childress's uh, Chevrolet engine company. Okay. And I I would put him up as one of the best engine shops in the world that I know of. I mean, it's just it's phenomenal what what we do there as a, as you know his company. So All right. I enjoy doing that, and I do old school. Uh, any brand restoration, and we do some car stuff here too. So, we, and one of our goals that we want to do together is we want to replicate Lee's 1954 championship car that he went down there and got out of the dealership and won the race on the beach course. And hopefully, we can have that done in a couple of years. <laughs> if we go down there for the 70th yeah. anniversary. Yeah. Or, Revealing. Now, how about you guys? What are you doing now? Well, I, I actually work. Uh, for Petty's Garage, Petty Museum, and Richard Petty. I mow the yards, um, whatever they need me to do. I've been doing this for about seven years, but it's been good for me because it, uh, you know, through all the years of that there was any turmoil or whatever, well, it's allowed me to get to know Richard and his family again on a different level. There's, you know, it's not competitive. We're not racing, but, they, um, you know, I, I worked with Rebecca. Her and Brian on Petty's Garage, and I work with Richard's daughter Sharon. She runs the museum, and I get to see Kyle. He's in and out, and I and I get to see Richard every day, and I get to see Dale a lot. But it 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 allowed me to make peace and just roll forward. And I really I enjoy I enjoy listening to some of Richard and Dale's stories now because it's some of the stories I heard from Dad, and then they repeat the same story, and it's it ain't far it's, it's spot on. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of the tales through the years they they grow as it goes, but they're everything them three tales is usually about dead on. Now, what are, what are you doing? Today? Well, for I took care of mom and dad, uh, their stuff for, and then now they're dead, so I'm trying to figure out my way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I also got, got that's you. my son's Petty Shine. Okay, my son Judson he he does a detail business out of the back shop back here, and he and I. Actually went in together and we bought a little five bay yeah. car wash down in town. So, man, we're trying to put together the the, the Petty Brothers Racing uh, YouTube site, and we're doing a little uh, different things. But we, the three of us and our sister, we ended up with all the pictures and artifacts of grandmothers and dead mamas and daddies, and and so uh, we're trying to figure out if there's a if there's a need for them. Right now, we supply things to the Hall of Fame and and different things. So I, I guess I kind of handle that. Absolutely. Guess. Yes, there's a need for it. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I guess that's that's where my times took care yeah. of taking pictures and and trying to figure this out and all. But well, we joke about it. that's what kind of started the podcast deal is we want to tell our kids what everything was. <laughs> yeah. And we joke so when they went to throw it in the dumpster, they at least know what they stole right. away. So or so. they <gasps> they wouldn't throw it away, you know, because they don't know what it is unless we tell them. So that's well, anything that you're going to throw in the dumpster, just pitch <laughs> it in that car out there. We done dug it out of the dumpster <laughs> once. I know we'll put it back in. Yeah. All right. Um. Last question. Well, two more questions. Mm. Um. What was it like for you guys when your dad was elected to the NASCAR Hall of Fame? Unbelievable. I mean, really. I mean, think about it. I think we wanted it more than he did because we uh, we just we're so proud of him from everything he done and he just still. And our mom, she you know she was even going through a lot of, you know, with her health and. Uh, but 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 that I remember the day he when he got called uh, when he when they when they when they inducted him. And uh, we, I was sitting up at a ball field with my kids, and and uh, and they called, and I was just I was just tickled to death because, yeah, well, just 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 so just so proud of my dad, and I was just finally uh, that people can recognize what he actually accomplished, you know, because well, well it, it couldn't have come probably for our family. It, again, God handles everything in a great way, and it couldn't have happened no better because there was he got uh, in May they said he was going to go in, yeah, and then. Mother found out she was sick in July, mm -hmm. and that was one of her statements was, if I can just live to see him go in the Hall of Fame, 
and she was able to do God allowed her to do that in January and then she went home in May yeah so, so it really become even extra special because it was something she wanted yeah and them two are the ones yeah our mom and dad no matter what we think we went through with this oh, yeah. whole petty family oh, yeah. deal our mom and dad were the uh, they went through it it was their it was their hard work their toils their efforts just like Richard Linda all the yeah. whole crowd we were just lucky enough to be their children and I was thankful enough that when when grandfather when he went in mom and dad got to go experience the uh, all the uh, accolades of traveling around the racetracks and all that they got to experience all that together so when dad got to nod and like he said mama got sick she couldn't go and do do the things that they that did so they got to do it together the first round with lee boy so that was that was actually nice awesome good deal last question how would you like for your dad to be remembered by race fans it ain't how i'm uh whew, that's a good question tricky yeah no he it, i don't i don't have I, ask that question again how do I want him to be remembered? Hell, he's already remembered. He's the greatest uh, engine builder, uh, the greatest uh, dad, the greatest everything in my life. Yeah, well, I That's mean. That's how I remember him. Exactly. I don't know if you can put it all in words in, in just a few seconds. But, I, I, again, we'll go back to, you know, the uncomfortable question we were asked earlier about the 83 well, I, what I think about the way I want my dad to be remembered is how he handled it. Yeah, oh, how yeah. he handled what they. I'll say this about the chief. He, he he had an unbelievable ability to make a call in tough times and stick with it, and ninety percent of the time it was right. You know what I mean? He 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 had that. Well, he had experience too, but he. His decisions, and he would tell us, when you make a decision, Stand stick with it. So that, that meant you that's had good. to make the right decision almost no, instantly, you, that's, that's a lot a, of that's, times. That's perfect. That's right. But, and, but how, how, how he's remembered is that he, he, he went through and he, he had a struggle as a child with the polio. He overcome it. And with his dad and his brother, they were able to build mm -hmm. – arguably one of the best NASCAR race teams of all time. And then they went through a lot more hardships, but he overcame it. He loved the Lord yeah. and he just, he, he showed you how to handle adversity, adversity tough and tough times. situations. And, and, you know, we're all short tempered, but in the long run, he, he, he might, he might've been short tempered with things, but in the long run, he handled things the correct way. And just how, how he took all that on his yeah. shoulders in a, in a positive way, you know, I, mean, I could I could say a lot of I could say a lot of things, but I think you just hit it perfect, and I I commend you. That was I, I enjoyed listening to you. <laughs> no, but it just I mean, no, I mean and, that was that was great. And, and you know, again, we talk about oh how bad it was when when they, everybody split up in '83, but really, it it seemed bad at the time. But for our family, it was the greatest thing that ever happened because, again, our dad had high blood pressure, and he was a he was a walking stroke, mm -hmm. and that calmed him down. And then he was saved, and he was able to get close to the Lord. After that, after that, really, I'm not. Yeah, and I know it was after that. Yeah, and um, it it allowed them. It just allowed us to get to know him as a different person for, for the rest of his life. And that last 35 years, we were uh, very fortunate to get to know him. And like I said, had had it worked out like we thought we wanted it to. Oh, he, he might have been gone in 84. Yeah. For a guy that's yeah. known for a rough exterior, you know, serious mean, yeah. he, our dad was a good person. He's a I mean, man. And, and like I said, he, he, it was all, you know. Oh, I, I people... don't think we will ever know. I don't think we will ever know the sacrifices our dad no, made true. for us. Not the whole group. Right. right. Through all that, all you know, did. everything that went on or what didn't go on. I think at the end of the day, he was trying to look after us, and I, we'll never realize well, the sacrifice he made because of us. And, and that we appreciate you, it. And you're talking about him being a good guy. I, I know several times people come in here wanting to borrow you. Hey, I need, to, I need to, some money for groceries, and I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. And he'd, he'd give them the money. He'd come out there and say, I'll never see that guy again. But I did the right thing because that's what the good Lord wanted me to do. Yeah. And, I, and I know there's probably anybody that ever knew him will agree with what I'm about to say that it, uh, you might not always like what he had to say, but you always knew where he stood. Yeah. 
It, you, you wasn't going you wasn't going to hear nothing that Mars Petty said behind your back. He was going to say <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he's, yeah, he definitely. Yeah. And, he you definitely. know, in, the, in this world that we are in today, there, there's a lot of that that goes on. And, yeah. But he, he was a he was a man of he, – he, you knew where he stood, for sure. And he was uh, – he was a. Oh, uh, I appreciate a, you a, asking. A real, he's yep. a real, a real loyal person too. If you, if you did right by him, he'd do right by you. I guess that's how you'd say that. Yep. So, 